I think you're gonna be our most popular. Yeah. Um, so, uh, as as some people mentioned at the table earlier this evening, um, these options aren't mutually exclusive. There is an opportunity to do more than one. Um, uh, is again, it's sort of it's all part of the evaluation. Now, in some cases, you can't do you know um, uh, a subway extension. Um, that goes down the same path as a potential BRT line because you have to use the same uh, uh, land there. But again, there's opportunities in some cases to look at multiple options and that's all part of how we are evaluating it. And I just want to reiterate, it's not just the Port Authority and our, our, our agencies, our sister agencies here, but you know, we are really being guided and they're taking this their job very seriously by three really uh, uh, renowned experts in transportation, <coughs> folks that have done uh, uh, bus route for transit, both folks that have done this here, uh, elsewhere in the country, but also internationally about how to improve mass transit access to the airport. And so it is, uh, they are taking it very seriously. We speak with them very regularly. And um, as I said, it, it's not necessarily just one. There's opportunities to look at multiple options as well. Frank, then you walk, and then you Okay. Um, well, thank you, Senator, for having us. Uh, we really appreciate you, you know, being in the neighborhood and, and really active as you are. Uh, I just want to remind you guys that without dedicated bus lanes, if you Google the Q66 and the Q70, it takes 31 minutes from Manhattan to LaGuardia Airport. As to reiterate what John just said, the worst part of the trip is getting in and out of the airport, which has been reconfigured, so it shouldn't be that problem any longer. Second thing I want to ask is, you, Hurst, said something about the environment. Can you, I'm a little slow sometimes, so if you could clarify that for me, because I didn't understand it. Absolutely, so one of the things that the governor asked us to do was figure out an option that will not only improve mass transit connectivity to the airport, but also take cars off the road. Um, it is a goal to you know, reduce car traffic on the roads surrounding the airport. That is a benefit to people that might be using the Grand Central Parkway to get elsewhere, but also to the East Elmhurst community, which also is impacted by traffic when there is heavy congestion at the airport. Okay. So reducing that car traffic is part of the environmental benefits that we're looking at. I got it now. So my question is simply Sorry. this. You're concerned about the environment, which to me is a joke. Because the simple fact is that you move the airport closer to the neighborhood, you, you've doubled the size of the airport. So there's double the size of the NOx and CO2 gases that come into our neighborhoods from East Elmhurst to Jackson Heights, and they kill our people. This place has, is called Asthma and Cancer Alley. Why? Because of the airport. You will not put air monitors in the neighborhoods like they do with JFK, and JFK is a little bit further away because you know that you're in clear violation. So for you to say that you guys care about the environment, our kids are getting left back in school because of the air. And all this has been tested. Your college just did another test. They've been testing for the last 20 years. I sit on the round table also. The aviatic, uh, whatever, round table. Aviation. Aviation round table. And I'm finding out information that you guys already know. And you've known for decades. For decades. How dare you come here and talk about the environment? You built an airport on a garbage dump that was covered over in the 1920s. And you built it out, but you can't build it on Rikers Island because Rikers Island is contaminated. LaGuardia Airport's not? Do you think everybody here is stupid, bro? No, and that's the problem. Everybody's not stupid. People read in this room. People read in this community. And you come here and dare say about, you're concerned about the environment? Come on, man. That's ridiculous. <laughs> you want to address the 
environmental? So just a couple of things. One is so, so, so while the airport has gotten larger, there are no additional flights at the new airport because LaGuardia... The airport goes, it used to stop at 12 o'clock at night. It used to stop at 11 o'clock at night. Then the airport goes all day long, all night long. I sit here sometimes, I live here, bro. I live here, I'm not in far hills. I live here. I sit on this promenade and I watch the airplanes. And I'm like, is it supposed to stop at 12 o'clock? We're not going to do I'm, I'm sorry, Cindy. I'm sorry. But I just so, can't listen to this. LaGuardia remains a slot controlled airport that has not changed. We are not able to have additional flights at LaGuardia. And LaGuardia also does not have any scheduled flights in the overnight hours. However, based on FAA requirements, the airport must remain open to ensure that flights that might be delayed or other emergency flights that need to land. There is an opportunity for them to land. You have emergency flights every night. I fly in from LA uh, in a red eye at like 2 o'clock in the morning. That's the JFK, though. There's no LaGuardia JFK. There's no LaGuardia, no, no LaGuardia, there's no LaGuardia, JF, <laughs> there's no LaGuardia L, LA flights. You have flights here at 2 o'clock in the morning every night. It's stopped. The farthest you can go is to Denver on Saturdays. Right. Every night. All right, Nula, Laura, up here, and then Lily. And then we're right here. Okay, first of all, I'm so happy to be here talking about something other than that horrible air train. Um, so thank you so much for being here today to talk about more options. And I love all the options. Go vote number 12, all right? Um, but not on those lists is the idea of having the Q72, which goes down Junction Boulevard in heavily used neighborhood, um, go into the airport and have a dedicated bus lane and maybe a free bus so that people in the neighborhood could go back and forth to the airport easily, especially workers. Um, it would give a very direct access to the airport. Uh, if you have a dedicated bus lane, it would actually move faster than it does now. And if you made it free, the people in the neighborhood would actually appreciate it too, and maybe you'd get some local support. <laughs> so the, the options under evaluation are the Q70 and the M60, which are currently SPS services. Colleagues up to you, yes, okay. <laughs> Um, operated by our friends at the MTA. Um, and there are options looking at additional services that connect to um, other subway stations. Um, the Q72 is not one of those options as under evaluation. Um, but we are looking very seriously at either enhancing um, existing bus service or offering uh, new bus options from uh, existing uh, subway stations. And again, working very closely with the MTA because that that needs to happen. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, so I, I'm a Queens organizer at Transportation Alternatives and a lifelong Queens resident. And I support a lot of what Frank is saying. Uh, given the urgency of the climate crisis, uh, we really should be developing a long-term plan to phase down the operations at the airport as we develop high-speed rail. That being said, um, we do urgently need uh, to reduce um, car usage to get to the airport in the meantime. I think that this makes dedicated bus lanes a real no-brainer. Um, and when I flew into LaGuardia a couple of weeks ago, I took the Q70. It took less than 15 minutes to get from the airport to the 7, which really does reinforce just how good dedicated bus lanes could be for this. But the hardest part of the whole journey was just getting on and off the 7 train. So I'd like to know if there are going to be uh, accessibility upgrades at 74th Roosevelt and other stations um, that would make this a lot easier and just help people anyway who use wheelchairs and strollers and other mobility devices, not just wheeling suitcases. Absolutely. So we, as part of this current capital program, have made a massive investment over 70 uh, new elevators will be going in. They're being phased sort of around eight to 10 elevators at a time. Um, so you know, on the seven line, there are a number of stations that have been picked as to receive new elevators. We're using the metric of a person should be able to not go further than two subway stations away until they get an elevator. And so that's sort of the metric that we're using to determine where we're gonna put in the elevators. But the seven line, Definitely slated to get new elevators. 
And then also, I will, yeah, yeah, so yeah, sure. that's a good thing. And then also, mm -hmm. I would say that, um, you know, one of the things that, that we yeah. are wanting to remind people is that when you use our buses, um, our bus stops are actually handicap accessible. And so again, that's another way that we're trying to really make it so that all folks can get on to our system and to transfer over to where they need to go. I just, actually just want to add, so some of the current elevators um, also Sorry, I'm they're, they're barely big enough for like a stroller and a suitcase. Oh, I'm sorry. And some of the escalators are fairly narrow as well. So I will say it's also part of this capital program, and I will, oh, sorry, apologies. Um, I will also say as part of this capital program, we have replaced new elevators. Um, and also when we replace them, it means that we can connect them to our security system. There's some, there's some real benefits to us you know, actually modernizing the existing elevators. So point taken, and those are, are happening around the system. Thank you. You have a question up here? Yes. So thank you, Senator. And uh, I think I've been hearing the air trend for a long time. And I think I can remember what you said, what kind of often that we have. And I support what the friend said about the climate modification. But I think we have a solution right here, finally. I think dedicated bus lane has definitely been right there. You don't have to wait 10 years or 20 years. And you, don't have, you don't need like a trigger to come The other thing is the ferry, right? I mean, so we have water right here, we have the location, everything. I think the other thing is the ferry off the south of the plant. That seems 